On October 13th, a female investor was seen crying in her car, having lost 20,000 yen in one day on the stock market. The Chinese stock market feels like a roller coaster with extreme ups and downs, and investors are in despair everywhere. I'm that fool who rushed into the stock market at 9:30 a.m. on the 8th, leading my friends with me, only to become a major sucker or what they call a big child. Hello, everyone. I'm part of that group of newbies who got tricked into the market on October 8th. So far. I've lost 24,000 yuan. I don't know who's winning in this market. When the market falls, I lose money. When it rises, I still lose. Even today, despite a big positive trend, I'm still down 700 yuan. I can't take it. My stocks are still in the red. Oh my God, everyone! Today feels like another stormy day. In just six trading days, I've lost a million yuan. I've been trading for over a decade, but I can't handle this level of turmoil anymore. Lately, it's really been getting to me. Recently, the Chinese government introduced a series of policies to boost economic growth, which caused the stock market to fluctuate, trapping thousands of retail investors who are now crying out in frustration. A lot of friends ask me, "You've lost so much in stocks. Can you still sleep at night?" I act tough and tell them. I'm still young, just learning from this experience. No big deal. But when I think about my parents, who only earned 3,000 yuan a month, I feel like such a failure. It makes me want to cry. Many followers asked why I didn't post an update this morning. Did I lose so much that I couldn't even write? I was waiting for my account to turn positive, but by the end of the day, it didn't happen. My account balance, which peaked at 350,000 yuan. Before the National Day holiday, has now dropped to just over 70,000 yen. Today, I have four stocks, and three of them are still down. I'm starting to doubt my stock picking ability. The market actually opened low, but went up later, turning green. But my individual stocks kept falling. Even in this supposed bull market, I'm losing money, even more than before the New Year. Back then, my losses were just a few thousand, or maybe 10,000 yen a day. Now. In a bull market, I'm losing tens of thousands. Yesterday, I lost 42,000 yuan. Today, another 17,000. A few days ago, it was over 50,000. The worst was October 9th, when I lost over 120,000 yuan. Brothers, you've been telling me to stop. I've been holding on, but now I'm starting to doubt if I'm doing the right thing. But at this point, there's no turning back. I can't just sell everything. I've come this far, so I'll keep holding on. Over the past 20 days, everyone has been talking about the stock market. New investors, especially, have experienced major emotional swings. Initially, they envied those who successfully bought the dip at the end of September. After a tough National Day holiday, many poured their savings into the stock market, only to see prices drop continuously. People are already struggling to make a living, and now they can't bring themselves to sell at a loss. The market's dramatic swings have left investors on edge and deeply stressed. Despite being known for their resilience against housing and car loans, the younger generation, including those born after 1995 and 2000, could not escape the stock market. Data from Guojin Securities shows that nearly half of the new accounts recently opened belong to these younger investors. But behind the bustling scene, some of these newcomers have already suffered significant losses. A quick search on Chinese social media platform Xiao Hongshu yields over 300,000 posts about borrowing money to invest in stocks. Many of these posts were made in late September and early October. Several young people have shared their stories of taking out loans to trade stocks. One investor was born after 2000. After seeing a surge on September 30th, he opened an account during the National Day holiday, October 1st. Since he didn't have enough funds, he decided to apply for a 100,000 yuan credit loan on October 7th. Once in the market, he chose to invest solely in Aluminum Corporation of China. However, after buying in at a high point, he lost 10,000 yuan on October 8th alone. The next day, he lost another 6,000 yuan. He shared, "I traded a few other stocks later, but none of them made a profit. Now my initial investment is gone, and I'm down 7,000 yuan." 
he showed his loan repayment schedule with the first installment of 8,868 yuan due on October 25th, followed by nearly 9,000 yuan every month. Currently, he owes about 115,000 yuan and has yet to tell his family about his loan. Another investor from Wenzhou, Zhe Jiang, also took out an unsecured loan called a flash loan. On October 8th, the bank sent him a message stating that his loan has been stopped due to his involvement in stock trading and demanded repayment. He said, I did transfer the money to my stock trading account and the bank found out, but all my funds are tied up in the market. If I sell at a low point, I'll suffer heavy losses. With no other option, he had to find alternative ways to gather funds for repayment. Observations show that many of these new investors who entered the stock market using loans ended up with losses. Another investor, a 22-year-old biology master student, said he decided to borrow 210,000 yuan from his family to invest in stocks on September 26. He thought it was a good opportunity after hearing about U.S. interest rate cuts and expecting foreign capital to enter China. At first, he made over 10,000 yuan during the early days of the bull market. However, after the National Day holiday, the market corrected, and within three days, he not only lost all his earnings, but also ended up 30,000 yuan in the red. Some young investors have described the Chinese market like this. At first, I thought trading in stocks was an investment. Then I realized it was gambling. In the end, I understood it was actually a donation. Market observations reveal that many new investors lack proper knowledge of the stock market and do not have a stable economic foundation. They are often influenced by short videos and social media, which feed them messages about getting rich through stock trading. Eager to make quick money and hit it big, but without sufficient funds, they turn to loans. The idea was to use someone else's money to chase their own dreams. Young people are not the only ones taking out loans to invest in stocks. Many have shared guides online on how to bypass bank checks and secure funds for stock trading without getting caught, but authorities have started to notice this trend. Since October, several banks have reiterated a strict ban on credit funds being used for real estate and stock market investments. They emphasized that if any misuse is found, the loans will be recalled immediately. Screenshots circulating online show that on September 27th, a user borrowed 200,000 yuan from a bank. Due to suspected stock market trading, the bank froze the loan and demanded full repayment by November 10th. Financial media in China reported that banks have been holding internal meetings to address the recent surge in stock market transactions, discussing unified measures for bank-to-security transfers, fund purchases, and redemptions. An employee at one bank revealed that, after internal assessments, over 35 percent of the 4 billion yuan withdrawn in a single day had flowed into the stock market. The concern over credit funds entering the stock market stems from the high risks involved. It's too easy for young people to get loans these days, sometimes as much as hundreds of thousands of yuan without needing collateral or a guarantor. Some of them think, if I make money, great, but if capital tries to exploit me, I just won't pay it back. However, regulating the purpose of loans is difficult. Reports indicate that many loan intermediaries and facilitators have spotted this business opportunity, encouraging investors to use borrowed funds for stock trading. In the latest wave of stock trading mania, even those who used to show no interest in the stock market, like elderly people, have started jumping in. Liu Fang, who is 61 years old, joined the market not long ago, but she already looks worried. Wearing reading glasses, she stares at her phone's screen full of red, unable to eat or sleep. Since heavily investing in tech stocks on October 8th, one of her stocks has dropped by 18% within a week, causing her to lose over 10,000 yuan from her original 80,000 yuan investment. When she saw the market rally on October 8th, Liu Fang was overjoyed, saying, I've never made this much money in the stock market before. She earned 3,600 yuan on her nearly 80,000 yuan worth of stocks that day. Riding on this upward trend, she invested another 10,000 yuan through a different account. This 10,000 yuan was borrowed money, and her original 80,000 yuan was almost all of her savings. Liu Fang and her husband run a small shop. They have two elderly family members to support, and their nearly 30-year-old son is about to get married. Losing money in the stock market has only made their already tight finances worse. Xu Min, from a small town in Anhui, is also an experienced investor. He retired two years ago. 
On the last day of the National Day holiday, he poured all his savings, including his housing fund, into the stock market, a total of 400,000 yuan. But after the holiday, he had already lost about 15 percent. Xu Min's wife planned to invest her 200,000 yuan as well, but their son, Xu Yang, stopped her. Xu Yang is a recent graduate with an unstable job and barely earns enough to cover his own expenses. When he found out that his father had put all his savings into the stock market, he couldn't sleep for several days. Xu Yang remembers that when he was in elementary school, his father had lost over 200,000 yuan trading stocks. Elderly investors like Liu Feng and Xu Min, who are aggressively trading stocks, are not rare. They initially hoped to recoup their losses or make a big profit during this bull market, but were shocked to find themselves caught in the turbulence. They might end up as the ones holding the bag in this volatile market. Zhao Mi, who works in Shanghai, is also worried. His father, who had quit the stock market less than a month ago, has jumped back in, this time with borrowed money. For years, Zhao's father kept losing money in the market, even selling a family shop to continue trading stocks. To Zhao Mi, it seemed like his father cared more about stocks than about the family. In September, his father finally came to his senses and said he would quit trading for good. But when this so-called bull market came, he rushed back in, using loans to fund his trades. Zhao's father regretted not trading in September and missing out on the surge, so when the bull market hit, he asked Zhao for money. Zhao firmly refused, saying, even if you double your money in a month, I won't give you a penny. Even if you triple it, I won't take a cent from you. The A-share market has always been characterized by short-lived bull markets and long bear markets. After over nine years of prolonged declines, many people have been left exhausted and drained. Many long-time investors are still waiting, desperately hoping for their bull market to come. Recently, China's A-shares, which had been sluggish for years, experienced unprecedented turbulence. Driven by stronger-than-expected policy stimulus, the market surged before the National Day holiday, with trading volume on September 30th hitting a record high of 2.6 trillion yuan across the Shanghai and Shenzhen exchanges. On October 8th, the first trading day after the holiday, the three major A-share indices soared, with thousands of stocks hitting their daily limit. However, starting October 9th, the market began to pull back sharply, showing extreme volatility. Within just eight trading days after the holiday, the Shanghai Composite Index dropped from 3,674 points to around 3,200. Most analysts attribute this epic rise to what they call a policy market, where an unprecedented combination of policy measures fueled an artificial bull run. The A-share market is now highly volatile, with a clear division between bullish and bearish sides. The market lacks consistency, and it's apparent that A-shares are in a consolidation phase. Without a clear resolution, it's difficult to predict any sustained trend. Recently, Xie Jinghe, chairman of Caixin Media in Taipei, told Voice of America that the rally in A-shares was due to the accumulation of capital in the market after nine years of decline since 2015. When Chinese authorities capitalized on the opportunity of U.S. interest rate cuts and introduced stimulus policies, the market naturally surged. While this rally has lifted the floor of the Chinese stock market, its sustainability will depend on whether fundamentals can support it. Xie believes that without improvements in issues like industry competition and market inefficiencies in China, the room for further stock market gains is limited. China's securities market was established in 1990, initially to help state-owned enterprises raise funds. Later, private companies were allowed to list, and the stock market evolved into a platform often criticized as a money-making machine for fundraising. The Chinese government's penalties for fraudulent listings, insider trading, illegal stock reductions, and financial misrepresentation are far less stringent than those in mature markets like Europe and the U.S. With such low legal costs for violations, the rule of law is merely a slogan, leaving ordinary investors to bear the consequences. Each year, listed companies cash out hundreds of billions of yuan, enriching major shareholders while depriving retail investors of proper returns. Many companies go public solely to cash out, which directly drives down stock prices. Some companies even list with the sole intention of selling their shares at inflated prices, pocketing whatever they can. None of these companies are genuinely interested in using the funds for developing or returning profits to shareholders. As more companies engage in such practices, the market's supply-demand balance shifts, and people gradually realize the extent of this scheme. 
renowned Chinese economist Wu Jinglian once remarked that the Chinese stock market is worse than a casino. He said, even in a casino, there are rules, like not peeking at others' cards. Recently, as the market rallied, stockholder sell-offs have also increased. According to incomplete statistics, over 150 companies announced plans for stock reductions or detailed their next steps for sell-offs from September 24th to October 8th. The number of reduction announcements increased significantly compared to before September 24th. Bridgewater Associates, the world's largest hedge fund, bluntly stated that over the past decade, returns in China's stock market have been almost zero. Using the MCSI China Index as an example, the level of China's stock market remains about 50% lower than its peak at the start of 2021 after the COVID-19 outbreak. Some major Chinese tech companies, like Alibaba, have stock prices so low that cash equivalents and short-term financial assets on their balance sheets account for nearly a quarter of their market value. The report highlighted that overall market sentiment in China's stock market is at a historic low. Domestic investors tend to save rather than invest, while foreign investors have turned to markets with more attractive risk-return profiles. Unlike other stock markets, China's is primarily driven by speculative retail investors and smaller non-professional institutions. As a result, the market is prone to overreactions, leading to bubbles and subsequent crashes. Bridgewater's analysis suggests that for China's stock market to sustain a rise, the government would need to introduce strong fiscal policies, improve corporate profitability, and reverse the negative sentiment among investors. Currently, China's economy remains weak, and existing policies are insufficient to address core issues. Even with continuous policy stimulation, some foreign investors may not return to the Chinese market unless they see significant changes in areas such as geopolitical risks and other concerns. Bridgewater expects that regardless of how the situation unfolds, the Chinese stock market will go through a very volatile period. Bridgewater's assessment of China's stock market has sparked widespread discussion among Chinese investors, with some bluntly agreeing that foreigners have a clearer view of the situation. An ex-user posted, "The risks in the Chinese stock market this time are very different from 2015. Back then, the Chinese government had deep reserves, allowing it to withstand the crisis." But now the reserves are depleted and the economy is fragile. Harsh measures may only accelerate the market's decline. The mounting bad debts could lead to a financial collapse, possibly becoming the straw that breaks the camel's back for the Chinese government.